why I feel like product based businesses struggle. Okay. And like a lot of businesses and retail businesses have closed. In this day and age that we're in now, I don't see how someone can survive off less than times three. Times three. Okay. So that would be buying for 10 and selling for, for 30. 30. Welcome back to another episode of the Black is the New Rich podcast. And today we got a very special guest. First of all, I've been seeing her stuff everywhere because she has all these pretty ladies wearing her clothing and I waited to tell her that, but you know what? I don't even want to keep talking. Can you please introduce yourself? <laughs> Um, hello, everybody. I'm Samantha. I'm the owner of Shop 20 Inc. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. First of all, first <laughs> of all, I've seen your stuff. How long have you been in business for? Um, I've been in business since 2018. Okay, because I've been seeing yeah. your stuff for a while, but I thought it was like um, American company, to be honest. Really? Because oh, wow. it's it's produ it's for women, right? Yes. Okay, so like women's. I've seen all these pretty influencers <laughs> wearing your stuff. So I was like, I just assumed it was like a Fashion Nova or okay. like Sheen type of vibe because it's like high designs, right? That all yeah. these girls wear. Right. So yeah, tell me about, before we talk about what you're doing now, mm -hmm. um, tell me about the lead up to where Shop 20 Inc. is today. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Shop 20... <sighs> Wow. Okay. So shop 20 started as, you know, like everybody else as an idea. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's, there's a backstory. It depends on how far back you want to go. I want to go as far, far back. back. Yeah, yeah, I want, I want to go as far, far back. I'm going to go as far as back as you said, you know what? I'm going to start a clothing brand. Okay. So, um, I won't go too, too far because <laughs> okay. we'll be here forever, okay. but I'll go back to as far as, um, I was at the point, just like a lot of other people, I wanted to do an online store. Mm -hmm. That just made the most sense financially um, and for the resources I had. Mm -hmm. So I started an online store. I had some product um, that I had ordered in, mm -hmm. just a little bit, nothing crazy. Yeah. And I was at that time, I was working wholesale. I was working as... Um, a sales rep for an Australian evening wear brand. Oh, okay. Cool. And they were new to Canada. So their objective was to get their dresses into as many stores, stores as possible. Yeah. So I was their first sales rep. So along the way, one of my clients who had a store in Scarborough town center, um, essentially he knew about what I was doing. He knew I had an online store. I think he was like, okay, I like her style. She should probably have some good stuff. <laughs> um, he was at a higher price point and I think he just needed a better flow. Mm -hmm. So we did like a consignment deal. Okay. And I was like, you know, your stuff's too expensive. You need, you need some cheaper stuff in here. Mm -hmm. So we did a deal and, um, small deal very tiny small deal <laughs> and um yeah i put my online inventory into his store okay. and i had priced it at 20 dollars. oh wow i was like you need some cheaper stuff like oh. this is scarborough <laughs> 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 so um it did really well it did really well it flew and that was 20 what year that was i don't even know i'm gonna say this was gonna be like 20 2014 2015 okay, something so like while. that yeah and um, the deal didn't work out. The mm -hmm. consignment deal didn't work out because, you know, this person played me oh, and man. I didn't get my money for oh, the product. Oh, geez. Um, but nonetheless, the $20 concept stuck in my head and how well it did stuck in my head. Okay. Um, so through so fast, that was the gem. That was the gem. Okay. That okay. was, he let, he gave me the platform to show me you know, people want good stuff, but they don't want to pay too much for it. Mm. So three years later, um, coming to this concept, I'm working as a bridal consultant. So I'm selling wedding dresses and the lady I worked for, she's she's iconic. Mm -hmm. um, and so she she was taking retail to another level in her own way, in her own terms. And I saw that and I was very inspired by it. And I... Um, just, you know, she's going to hate. If she sees this, she's going to hate this one. <laughs> On my downtime yeah. at work, I started working. I started planning at work. I, I planned business. this business at work. 
<laughs> on my downtime, yeah. on the computer, writing it down, writing it out in a notebook. And that's where Shop 20 came from. Because okay, I was amazing. like, I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to do my own store. Yeah. And I'm going to do $20 items. Jeez. And um, that was that's how the concept started. That's where it first originated. And um, yeah, when I first went to LA to get the first batch of product. Okay. Quickly got, I was quickly, you know, given a reality check that, okay, the $20 might not work. Uh So we did 20, 25 and $29. Okay. So that's how shop 20 initially started in Bramalee. Okay. And everything was 20, 25 and 29. Um, And then eventually just, you know, through, you know, with experience and inflation, Mm -hmm. um, we had to keep raising the prices. Due so, to inflation, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So we introduced the exclusives, and the exclusives were thirty nine dollars. Uh. I was like, "Whoa, okay." <laughs> um, and then eventually, we continued the exclusives, and then we added forty nine fifty nine. Okay. And we were fifty nine and under, but main focus was still twenty to twenty nine. Yeah. And then now we're at the point where we're at now where, you know, we're at 79 and under. Okay. Still have the 20, 25, and 29, but we've added 35, 39, 45, 49, 55, 59, Makes up sense. to $79. Makes sense. So we're there. We're staying there. Because, mm-hmm. you know, as you test it, you see what, works. what price point people are like, no. Yeah, too much. And this is supposed to, it's a quick buy, okay. right? Okay. So 79 was where... I think the quick buy ends. I oh, think once it's 89, it's like, yeah, oh, that's that's uh, 100. That's yeah, over 100. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Quick buy, 79 and under, good quality. Um, so that's where the price point came from. And okay. that's where it is now. Because some people who know us from Bramalee, which was our first location, yeah. they're like, they kept going up and up and up because they would know the 20, 25, yes. 29. But um, it's just natural. It's necessary. Inflation. Things keep growing. Things things keep getting more expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, in terms of price point, that was the flow. In terms of location, we've been in. We started at Bramalee. Yep. Went into Pickering shortly after. Yeah. Then went into Oshawa. Yeah. Then Scarborough Town Center now though. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We got Scarborough Town Center. So we had, and then we closed Bramalee and had Pickering, Oshawa, Scarborough Town. And then made the decision to swap out Pickering for Sherway Gardens. Oh, sick. And and That's then a, did Hamilton. So at one point we had four locations. Uh, running at one point. At oh, one time. Oh, yeah. Geez. Yeah. So that was crazy. Um, you know, and then made the decision to close down Sherway and Hamilton. Mm-hmm. And now we're with Scarborough and Oshawa. Okay, amazing. So it's it's been... Yeah, you've a, been moving. It's yeah. been a lot of puzzle, yeah. puzzle pieces and yeah. Tetris um, to get things right. But it's necessary just, okay. you know, to get that perfect combo. You got to uh, shift it. things and try things. Yeah. So oh. that's, I'd say... Started. How yeah, and okay. how it's gotten to where it is now. Okay, so yeah. I wanna I'm gonna come back to your price points. Um, okay, because I think that's important. But I wanna talk about your design process because from the I don't really know much about women's clothing. Okay, but from when I seen it, it looked like it was like high designs, but like affordable pricing. Yes. What is the uh, I would say the method towards that? Are you designing your clothes? Are you getting them designed? How does that work? Yeah. Um, no, I don't design. A lot of people ask that. They think I design. I'm like, (laughs) no, um, but they probably just don't know. So the business of fashion, and I don't know if like people would know the business of fashion is its own course in school. Oh, okay. And then fashion design is a totally different different. thing. So that's the creative aspect of when you have a designer, that's someone who's creative. Okay. Um, That's the creative aspect of, of fashion. I am into the business aspect of fashion. Okay. So that is seeing something or being able to identify something that I can buy for ten dollars and selling it for and selling it for thirty, forty to fifty dollars. Okay. So I'm into that side. So I okay. I buy things wholesale from different brands, mm-hmm. put collections together, and present them that way to sell them for the maximum. Profit. Okay. So how do you go about finding designers then for your company? Um. So 
this is gems I'm dropping, but it's okay. <laughs> That's um, why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people think it's like China, like, you know. Yeah, I was going to ask you if it's Alibaba, to be no, honest. Really? Okay, so no. let us know. <laughs> um, okay, so I disconnected from China a long time ago. I had a lot of experience with China. I dealt with China a lot yeah. in my younger days when I was doing a lot of my research and designing because before I was a designer. So I was designing my own oh, pieces. Oh, so you know that side as yeah. well. Okay. I was creating and designing. Now I'm I'm into the business side of it, the retail aspect of it. Yeah. Um China, there's a lot of cons for me with China. Mm-hmm. The language barrier, the timing is all is different. Yeah, yeah. The timing's a lot. It's different. Mm-hmm. It's very different. Um, quality control is a big thing. Yeah. Sizing is a big thing. We're in the Western world. They're, and you they're know, and yeah. Um, so between those four big cons, mm. I was like, China's not for me. And I wanted to, one thing that I, I said is I never wanted to get into a situation where I was lacking traffic. So oh. this is where I'm always, our locations are always in a mall. Oh, so traffic okay. is 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 was not ever supposed to be a thing because I've seen traffic drive people crazy. Yeah. The lack of traffic. Yeah. Being in a plaza, being <clears throat> where you have to drive your own traffic 100%, mm-hmm. it's hard. Okay. It's the hardest thing. So <clears throat> I avoided that by being in high traffic places. Okay. So that was already just an easier thing for me. Um, but I get my product from L.A., Oh, wow. Okay. Dang. (laughs) That's a big gem. (laughs) Big gem. So I get my product from LA. There is, for anybody wanting to start um, or, you know, do retail, there is an amazing, a huge, the world's biggest fashion district in Los Angeles, in downtown Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And all of the fast fashion wholesalers of the world from China, from Vietnam, from Mexico, all over... They put their product, they position their product in those vendors, with those vendors and those wholesalers. So imagine like downtown, like a couple blocks of mm-hmm. just wholesalers. So it's really? like you're shopping. In LA. But it's wholesale. Yeah. And they are, are those prices competitive with the Alibaba ones? Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Geez. It's because the thing with China and Alibaba, they want you to make a hundred of one item. Yes. We don't have time for that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have time for that. We need exclusivity. We need um quick turnaround. It's just, you know, things are moving too fast for that. So you can get lower mock-ups from Los Angeles? Yes, yes. So if Jeez. you go to this fashion district, I don't know if I could give the address. <laughs> I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. If you I type up it. a Los Angeles fashion district, you'll find it. Okay. And you can find women's, you can find men's, you can find accessories, you can find bridal, you can find everything. Is wow. It's, it's, it's incredible. And People, including myself, we travel yeah. from wherever yeah. to go to um, to to buy from there. And um, thank God there is online platforms as well mm-hmm. that connect you with to all that. of these vendors okay. in one place um, to be able to do it online as well. So you okay. can do it online, you can shop online, or you can go and uh-huh. touch and that's feel what and you meet. Did. You yes, went. that's what I did initially. Yeah. Um, is I went and and met with the vendors and it's a lot of it's like hundreds of different vendors. So really? I when would you never go, know this. people Jeez. think like it's one place. It's like no. When we get our collection, this yeah. collection came from like thirty different vendors that we've like handpicked different stuff from. Wow. Yeah. And when you go, like you're a shopper to them. This is wholesale land. Yeah. So you're a shopper to them. Okay. It's not like I mean, in some cases, depending if you have enough power, if you not have enough buying power, they'll sit down with you and they'll you know what do you need what do you want do you want to create something but for the most part they come in they say hi they greet you like you're in a store Mm -hmm. and you look around and you say i want want. one pack of that one pack of that one pack of that yeah and they'll and then you guys will organize how it's going to be delivered and shipped to you so oh sorry yeah not to cut you off but Mm -hmm. when you get your um your pieces then do you get them designed after like let's say i wanted to let's say i wanted a hoodie they're gonna screen print it and do everything for me no. So this is this is fast fashion. Okay, fast so, fashion yeah, so what is that? Fast. Yeah, so what does that mean? So, Break that down. 
I go into the this person's store. Yeah. I say, I like that dress. Okay, I want a pack of that dress for, and the pack is going to come in six. Okay. So two smalls, two mediums, two larges. Okay. Again, another gem. Um, <laughs> so you can really go down there and buy six of something, mm. right? But they won't sell you anything less than that. Okay. And they're very, like, if you're going to go down there and you're not buying things or you're not they're buying wholesale, they're not even going to be, they're just not going to deal with you. They're okay. not going to help you. And yeah. they, 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 They'll vet you before you come in. Mm. So because, you know, I'm a black woman, they're like, oh, she's probably just looking for some deals. She probably uh, just want random <laughs> things. I get that all the time. But yeah. um, until I start saying, I want one of this, one of this, one of this. And they're like, whoa, okay. who is this person? <laughs> but um, yeah, they'll definitely vet you. So if you're not there to buy, I mean, you can look, but yeah. um, they won't take you serious because uh, they're in there to sell packs of okay. things, not one or two. So, for, for example, like, I'll be looking for, I'm looking for a certain type of blank hoodie. Is that the place I would go to to look for that? Yes. Yeah. You would go and you would get that hoodie and you're going to get it for a good price. And I'm going to go get that then designed. Then you would, the design process is different. Oh, yeah. Some of those manufacturers you can connect with and they will design for you. But okay. they'll still, again, want usually... 100 pieces or whatever oh, the case okay. is. So this is like just the buying process. This okay. is not designing. This okay. is the buying process. So you go, you get that hoodie. Yeah. You buy it. The beauty is you're buying it in whatever colors and the sizes for the right price. Okay. That's the point of this is okay. that you can go to LA instead of going to China and you can get these things for cheaper and you don't have to buy so many. Uh, so if you wanted a hoodie, you could literally go and buy six. Okay. Um, and get the premium price. And get a good price for it. Yeah, wholesale premium price. I'm here to go on Alibaba stressing. No. I'm waiting up to like 10 p.m. because it's their 10 a.m. Stop it. No, no, no Alibaba. L.A. Okay, L.A. L.A. And yeah, I'm going to replay LA this LA Fashion District okay, is where go. people need to be. And I'm, I'm going to say this because there's so many different vendors and so much different product that... Everyone's gonna put their their Creativity. their stuff together differently. Yeah, like you mean you could go buying the same things, and our collections would look totally different because okay. there's just so many options. Okay, but there's men's options as well. Okay, amazing. So that's also where the men wholesalers are. Um, yeah, you could get a a hoodie for track suits. You could get a track suit for maybe ten dollars US. Oh, jeez. You could get a hoodie for. Pretty cheap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Pretty cheap. Okay. So. Say less. Yeah. So I want to talk about numbers, right? Mm -hmm. I want to know, like, for example, like when you are um, selling your product, like how much, what is the percentage going back into the business? How are you paying yourself and those type of things? Um, okay. Money, <laughs> the money. Okay. Um, so this has been a process okay. because at first, when you start, it's like, okay, get your foot in the door. So I wasn't greedy like that. Mm -hmm. I was, so at first, my margins were a times two margin. Okay. So if that means if there's 10, you sold them for? 20. 20. Okay. Yeah. So that was, you know, it, it was okay. We were making money. But when you think about it, if you buy something for $10 and you sell it, that $10 has to go back into the item and it, you only have $10 to pay everything else okay so this is why i feel like product-based businesses struggle okay. and like a lot of businesses and retail businesses have closed because your margin has to be up there okay. it has to be higher okay so that if you buy for 10 mm -hmm. what's a safe number honestly in this in, in this, this world age, in this day and age that we're in 2023 now, yeah <laughs> in this day and age that we're in now, I don't see how someone can survive off less than times three. Times three. Okay. So that would be buying for 10 and selling for, for 30. 30. Okay. And so we've had to make that adjustment. And and my margin is higher than yeah, three. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, <laughs> it, and, it, and it has to be because then I have, you know, we have brick and mortars. Yes. And brick and mortars yeah. are expensive. Yeah. They're powerful, but they're expensive. Yeah. So... In order to cover the cost of rent, yeah. payroll, yeah. and all the other stuff that comes with having a brick and mortar, just small things, bags, mm -hmm. supplies, mannequins, mm -hmm. little things like that. Yeah, I'm going to say... Maybe times five? 
Oh, times five is awesome. Oh, okay. If you can get times five, you're good. And and <laughs> um, places like the the big boys that you see that are in the mall sitting comfortably. Yeah. Such as, uh, hopefully I don't get in trouble for this, Bath and Body. Yeah. Like, I look at the, like, I idolize those guys because I can only imagine what their, ha- price what their the- margins are, yeah. you know, like off, you know, they're probably paying like cents, some 50 almost. cents, a dollar or something and selling the- it for 10, 20. Like, so like, you know, you have players that have amazing, amazing margins. And I think that that's the point is yeah, to be I, able to build a brand a that you can or just build something that you can or a product that you can sell for the highest margin possible really yeah. um but i try to be fair and i've i've learned that not being greedy ha- has Thanks the off. blessings keep coming back you I know agree. It, it, they return so i'm not greedy okay i'm not greedy i'm fair okay i'm fair so Anything that I, if I wouldn't buy it for that price, I don't charge that price. I okay. charge whatever I would buy it for or, you know, our staff or our management team or whatever, like whatever we would buy it for. Are we cheap? I'm cheap. <laughs> I'm saying I'm cheap. Yeah. So whatever I would buy it for is what I'll charge for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I won't go too crazy above that. I don't want to see someone buy something or have to buy something because they need it and be disappointed with the price. Mm, the point is supposed true. to be, I like it. It's my size. It yeah. fits. I'm buying it. It's okay. a, it's a, it's a quick purchase. Okay. Makes so, sense. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, um, your influencer strategy because around the city, I've seen all the girls wear your stuff. Really? Post your, I, yeah, I've been noticing. Wow. Cause I keep, I, I've, I keep, well, I used to be a photographer, right? Oh, okay. So, and I did nude photography, but I shot a lot of women. So, so I would nude? nude. Yeah, nude. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> okay. yeah. So I shot a lot of women before. So I okay. would notice like they post their clothing and they would always tag you. Yes. So yeah. that's how I like your your company's name has like you know, it's familiar to right, me. Right. Right. So what is your influencer strategy? Are you paying? Are you reaching out? Are you giving free merch? What's going on? Are a little bit of both? Um. So in terms of influencers, okay, so more gems. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh my That's god, I don't here. talk about these things. <laughs> I am not I'm I okay, so ba- in this day and age, yeah. I consider myself to be kind of old school. Like I feel like I was born in the 90s, mm-hmm. so I'm not fully new school. Yeah. And I still caught a lot of like the 80s and the, you know, so for me, I don't believe, like, I believe in it and I see the power of the influencer. Okay. But a lot of these influencers are cap. Um, a lot of them. Like a their lot analytics of them, are cap or their influence the is actual, cap? Their actual results and their actual influence is cap. Okay. A lot of these influencers are not, they don't have the influence that they think they do, or okay. they don't have the influence that they're charging you for. Uh, so imagine if you're paying a thousand dollars for someone. In my head, it's, you know, I'm a businesswoman. So if I pay a thousand dollars for you, you need to generate two thousand dollars of sales fair, for me. Fair. Um, in some way. And maybe I'll discount the branding or yeah. the the content that I'm getting or whatever, but you still need to generate a good amount of you want money, a, a, return a return. On your, yeah, on your investment. Yeah. And a lot of these influencers will not do that for you. You're mm-hmm. getting you'll get the content and you'll maybe get the, ooh, did you see that person in but so you so. won't actually get the bottom line return. Um, Can I play God's advocate for a second? Okay. Okay. So because you sell women's products, yes, right? Yeah. And just because I the photography background, I kind of know how their social media works, right? Yeah. So a lot of them, these pretty girls, they're probably uh, predominantly men following. Could that be hurting as well? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a great point. Um, A lot of these influencers, their following is majority men. Exactly. So it's like for fashion, it doesn't it doesn't really help or it doesn't benefit. Again, it's a pretty girl in your clothing. Great. And it's content for you to use. Mm -hmm. But as on a return, 
no. Yeah. So that's, yeah, you hit that right there. That, <laughs> that's one of the main things. Okay. Um, so what we do is, first of all, we have a brand ambassador program. Okay. Um, and basically what that program is, is every month, if you're an ambassador and for us, we, we obviously know there's micro ambassadors that are just, there's micro influencers that have 2000, 3000, 4000 followers. Um, and then there is ambassadors or influencers that have 10,000, 100,000, yeah. whatever the case is. So our program focused on the micro ambassadors. Okay. And so we went after people who had a following. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't anything crazy. Okay. Why is um, that? Because we wanted reality. Oh. Like we <laughs> wanted reality. Yeah, we want yeah. like... You know, the girl that is beautiful that you look up to that you'll see on it every day or you'll mm. see on Instagram because that's Not our the customer. Kim K looking yeah, type of girl, like yeah. our customer is that everyday woman yeah. and that everyday person. So walking through the mall, yeah. coming into the store, right? So um we feel like those influencers have a reach as well if we had a good combo of them. Yeah. So and they do. Mm -hmm. Um, so our ambassador program is, you know, you get free product every month. Okay. Um, and the stipulation is you need to take a good quality picture. How many are we talking um, about? So it depends on the person and their influence. Okay. Um, some people will get one item. Yeah. Some people will give them a couple outfits. Okay. Um, so it just depends on the person. Okay. Everybody's different. So every drop they get something or every, every month, month? Every month. Every month. Okay. You're getting something. Okay. So this is free clothes. Yeah. Like, why not? Yeah. Um, and then you're just to take a good picture in it and tag us. Okay. And then so you're posting it, of course. Mm -hmm. We're going to post it so we have content. Yeah. You're following a scene it our following is seeing it so the exposure is that way okay. so we were basically building a pretty good list of ambassadors yeah um and, th and that's pretty much what fashion nova and all of those bigger companies do as well just obviously on a bigger scale and they're yes you know probably paying and giving more products and stuff like that but we had an ambassador program and then obviously we need models for our shoots yeah. so that was a thing as well the models are always connected um and so they would get free pieces. We give yeah. them free pieces. Oh. They're part of our community. So okay. they get free pieces. They promote willingly and stuff like that as well. So it was really just, I'd say, the combination of customers, yeah. um, our brand ambassador program, and then just, you know, the models that we use, just supporting the brand and, like, being a part of the community. Okay. Um, but, yeah, and we haven't done any, like, macro influencers yeah. because... I don't know if you've seen the price list these days. Yeah, it's I know crazy. it's crazy. No, it is crazy. And I just really, and I mean, there are some, there are some that I can't afford. The yeah. ones I want, I can't afford. Yeah. Um, those are the ones I feel that would give me the, the return on investment. Yeah. 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 Cause I, I do feel like a lot of, uh, the ones under that, but the, even the hundred thousands have a lot of men following. Yeah. And it's not really like, women empowerment true. yeah following. there's a few good true influencers mm -hmm. um that i would love but again they're usually busy with their own lines brands. or brands and stuff like that or the price tag is you know you just can't afford it and okay. if you can't afford you can't afford it yeah. it is what it is yeah. that's okay yeah. but yeah okay so i would okay. say that so what's the frequency of how um how much you drop collections like how like what's the time space in between? Um, so we're fast fashion. So yeah. collections, not so much. Not really collections. Oh, okay. They're like weekly drops. So oh, we really? typically drop every week. Yeah, you know the, te the tension span of <laughs> yeah. of this generation yeah. is like this small. So yeah. um, if we have product for two weeks yeah. and we don't get new stuff, you have people coming in like. What's going on? I don't see anything. Is there anything new coming? No, it's yeah. like, it hasn't even been two weeks <laughs> yet. Yeah. So we're on a one week schedule. Interesting. And that's brick and mortar. Okay. Because you have to remember, I started the opposite way. Yeah. I started brick and mortar first, still building and working on our mm. lawn. Our online is nowhere where I want it to be, but okay. we did it the reverse way. Okay. So you would, if you were to give uh, a suggestion, you would start online first? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because for me, 
um, brick and mortar is the bigger investment. It's a bigger yes. investment, but the return is huge. Oh, because of the yeah, traffic. Because of the traffic. And it's it's organic traffic. It's organic traffic. Uh, and it's traffic every day. People go to the mall every day. Um, that's where people go. Like, either you online shop or you got to go to the mall and yeah. try to find what you're looking for. So, yeah, I would say... I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know. But I do wonder that a lot of people don't do brick and mortar. So I wonder, is it because of the investment that's required? Is mm -hmm. it, it's a tough, it's a hard investment. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I think online is just the easier route. It's the cheaper route, technically. J just by guessing, I think. But it's more saturated. Yeah, I, I think brick and mortar makes more sense for brands like yours, fast fashion. Yeah. Other than, let's say, black is the new rich. That's just solely like a brand that's more geared towards something different. Yeah. I feel like those fast fashion brands yeah. can benefit off the brick and mortar. Yeah, opposed that's to, true too. That's, what I, that's my random It guess. depends. Yeah, I think it depends on what you're doing. Uh, sometimes online is the way to go because, yeah. you know, we have brands like Fashion Nova and Pretty Little Thing and yeah. Shein and all those brands that are making racks. Oh my God. <laughs> Millions yeah. online. And when you can do online and make that kind of money and have that kind of following, you cut out all the, well, not all, um, because doing online is actually very expensive these days because yeah. there's just so much competition. Yeah. You have to do so much marketing. There's so much involved. And you have to have more, in my opinion, than uh, your product. You have to actually have a brand yeah. with the message, yeah. with the storyline. Online's hard. Yeah, not, Online's really hard. And I think a lot of people would know this and can I can identify with that because it's, it's like, it's hard for it to take off. Yeah. And when it takes off, like I don't feel like our online has taken off yet okay um but when it does take off i feel like you know and mm -hmm. you're like and it clicks and it just kind of clicks but it's hard mm -hmm. it's tough and it's it's it, it's expensive it's more expensive than it was before yeah so so do, so do you think with the fast uh, sorry fast fashion yeah. that it's going to take those uh big influencers to push that yeah then that's what it's probably because that's yeah. what i'm thinking too because i'm thinking um with Fashion Nova, maybe they've had a couple big influencers to yeah, push their narrative. Absolutely. Um, I think for online, I think there's like, for us, there's like the physical store and yeah. then there's the digital world, right? Uh, and so we are working on our digital presence, presence right now. Yes, 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 yes. We want our digital presence to mimic the the experience that people get in store. Uh, Cause in store, you get great customer service. Yeah. There's tons of product. But you can try, feel it, whatever the case is. But there's selection um, and there's all of that, that experience that you get. Online, we're trying to do the same. So we're trying to get all of our product. Remember, I'm the reverse. So yes. I'm trying to get all the product in the store online and okay. some influencers yes, yes, and okay. this and that. So there's different pieces that I feel that need to be done online to make it work okay but online is harder okay makes sense online is harder to me than brick and mortar Jeez. online is harder but i mean maybe not maybe i'm just saying that because me as a person i'm a brick and mortar person and you I'm figure that, old that out school, yeah, yeah 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 you know and it works for you it works for me i was in retail so i know retail i was in wholesale so i know front and back all different levels so, and I put the, I made that big investment into the brick and mortar. True. So I, I say that and maybe I just need to make that big investment online. Uh, uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I, I think online is hard. I think online is super tough. It's very, um, it's a challenging so space. It's very saturated. It's very competitive. Um, yeah. Okay. So I, yeah, that's definitely. So. How far in advance do you have inventory? Like, for example, like it's the winter now. So do you have already your summer stuff ready uh, to go when that time comes or you're just ordering? Boom, it gets here. We're good. Yeah, no, I we do things so different. Like, <laughs> yeah, please. Shaz Funny does things so just different from the cookie cutter. I, okay. I tell like all of our staff and like everything like we are not cookie cutter. We are the new kids on the block. Yeah, we're creating our own narrative program. We're in our own lane. Yeah. Um, 
we are super on season. Okay. And we're like, we're very current. Okay. So next week's product is bought the week prior. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And now you're buying online. Like you're, you have your um, vendors. I do, I do combo of both. So, so I go to LA sometimes. Oh, you're doing frequent trips? I yeah. Guess? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right now I'm going to LA every two weeks. Yeah. Every two weeks. Yeah. Shit, yeah. That's a lot of fly time. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's worth it. And yeah. then, yeah, so I do online okay. and I do I do LA. But the thing with online is you don't got to go. You don't have to pay for the flight. You don't have to pay for your hotel and yeah. all of that. So you save that money. Okay. Um, Are you going empty suitcase, by the way? Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah yeah okay okay makes sense um i'm actually going no suitcases yeah. and bringing back boxes <laughs> okay, yeah sick. yeah yeah yeah. and i feel like business these days um you just gotta do what you gotta do like th- like just sticking to the normal narrative is not going to cut it yeah. these days that's someone else's success yeah it's not 